Good morning, how are you? My name is Jim Peoples and I'm with Booz Allen Hamilton. I think the name's changed since I've been here. <clears throat> so I am sure I have to have new business cards, but be that as I may have Dr. Trey here with me. And uh, I wanted to spend the majority of the time talking with him because I think he has a very special message and a very special technology that will have a huge impact if it's real. So, Dr. Trey, tell me about your education. Where did, where did you, how did you go through and become a, a PhD with a bunch of worker bees at Stanford? Well, it's, um, it's a long story, isn't mm -hmm. it? Um, I'm highly international. Um, I grew up in China. Um, uh, 1998, after getting a bachelor degree in chemistry, um, I come to the uh, U.S., uh, come to Harvard, a chemistry department, to do my Ph.D. At Harvard? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the topic is on uh, nanotechnology. Mm. Uh, that was the time, uh, extremely exciting um, a topic on the nanowires I'm working on. Um, uh, 2002, um, I graduated, I came to uh, Berkeley, came to California to do my postdoc study uh, also on a nanotechnology, on a na another nanostructure uh, called quantum dot. Um, 2005, I joined the Stanford faculty to uh, work on um, batteries, energy storage. Ah, okay. Um, just for uh, the sake of argument, why don't you uh, give us a thumbnail of what a battery current battery is, a lithium battery, you know, the kind we stick in our flashlights or cameras. Can you just tell me what, it, what it's made of, the general three things that it has? Yeah, um, yeah we are actually very lucky to have a lithium ion batteries working for, for us. Let me tell you a, a little bit about its basic structure. Uh, a battery has two electrodes, one is positive, the other is negative, and there's an electrolyte separate the two electrodes. So you're moving ions between the two electrodes. Electrons are moving outside to power your iPod, to power your uh, uh, laptops, yeah. Now, you, the current lithium ion battery probably lasts, what, two or three hours, uh, full drain or something like that? Or? Uh, two, three hours, if you have a really good one, perhaps four hours. Ah, okay. Um, When you were working at Stanford, you decided to pick something to work on, and you picked batteries. And then you started using your nanoscale uh, uh, education and your interest in nanoscale. So tell me about what you did to the lithium-ion battery to change it forever. Um, yeah, this is a, a very uh, interesting uh, story, how I come up with the idea and doing uh, batteries. Um, so since as a graduate student until I became a professor, uh, it was about uh, um, seven years. Uh, and in that seven years, I learned a lot about nanotechnology, um, how to make very small structures, uh, study their properties, and try to use them for uh, transistors, mm. uh, use for biosensors. Um, actually, based on previous work, uh, there is a company called Nanosys, many of you know about, and, and Palo Alto uh, was funded by my PhD and postdoc advisor. Um, um, based on this background I have, and, and after joining Stanford faculty, I was thinking about, you know, I learned a lot about nanotechnology. What I can do exactly to change the, the whole world, change the society, I look into different applications, um, including um, batteries, solar cells, biosensors, non-volatile memories. My whole research group uh, is working on all these topics. So speaking of batteries, um, I, 
first study, you know, what, what's really needed in the batteries? You know, you, you mentioned uh, two, three hours uh, running time for charge, uh, sometimes four hours. Uh, that seems to be a big limitation for the batteries uh, now. Um, if you think about how to increase the runtime per charge, and, and look at the basic uh, battery structure we just talked about, positive electrode, negative electrodes, is the lithium ions you can store within these two electrodes that determine uh, how much energy you can get out. Um, so, so what you're saying is if I can put more lithium ions in, then uh, the battery lasts longer. That's right, that's exactly right. If you can put more lithium ions in the same batteries, mm -hmm. you can uh, get a lot more energy. Um, so now the question comes, uh, how do you put more lithium ions into the yeah. two battery it's electrodes? good question. Po yeah. <laughs> Positive and negative. Uh, the, uh, uh, the answer is simple. You need to change the materials. You cannot use the same materials anymore for the two electrodes. So did you take out that? nasty C word, carbon, and could do away with it? Yeah, uh, what we invented uh, in the last year also uh, was to uh, replace the carbon. Carbon is a negative electro in the batteries with silicon. What's silicon? Okay, silicon is sand, and it's the things that integrated circuits are made out of, right? Right. That's, it's really attractive to use silicon because we know so much about silicon. Ah. It's, a, it's a highly, uh, it's available at a large scale. Um, There's a whole beach full of it out there, right? That's right. <laughs> Literally, you can go out and take sand yeah. and um, do a little work to turn it into silicon. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, why did you pick silicon? It has an unusual property with respect to lithium, right? Yes. Um, it was really surprising when I found out that um, uh, it's known actually for 30 years uh, uh, based on fundamental study. When you look at the molecular formula of silicon combined with lithium, one silicon atoms can combine with 4.4 lithium atoms. Uh, it's huge. Six carbon can only combine with one lithium. So ah. that means uh, silicon can store 10 times more lithium ions than carbon. Oh, and this goes back to if you can put more lithium in, then the battery lasts longer and it's more powerful or something, right? That's right. Now yeah. it comes back to uh, uh, how much energy you can store. Uh, you have more lithiums and the electrodes now, you can have more energy. Well, I, I, I don't really want to go into the depth of the lithium wires too much, but I, w I would like you to tell them that when you put the lithium in, it swells. It, it's like a balloon. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So it's, it's clear, you know, why not use silicon already? Uh, so the, the only reason is simple, and like I you said, uh, you put more lithium ions in, silicon is going to expand. When they expand, they're going to break. When they break, you lose uh, 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 battery capacities right away. So that's not good. That's not good. Yeah. So our, our invention was to use a silicon nanowire structures. Ah. It's something we learned in nanotechnology and use these nanostructures to solve this uh, uh, breaking problem, the bloom uh, expansion problem. Uh, I've seen this in uh, some of the work I've done. When you have a brittle material and it's thick, it's brittle. And if you make it thin, it's supple. It's like a hair. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And they're, so this is flexible. the technical, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the get away from the breaking of the silicon as you make them thin and small. Now how small are these, 100 nanometers? Yeah, it's about 100 nanometer uh, in, in diameter. The uh -huh. lens can be very long. Uh, and we're only working on one side of this battery now. We're working on the, the carbon side of this battery. There's another piece to this that's the other side of the battery. What are you doing on that piece? Uh, we are also working very hard on that. Uh -huh. Certainly, there's a lot of secret uh, in that yet. I, I cannot say too much about it. Oh, OK. All yeah. right. Secrets. Ooh. I'll see if I can get it out of him later. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Just money, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK, so um, we, have a, we have a battery that's uh, more, more storage. How much more storage? So um, let's say the battery is a whole system. So you, you, you hear about yesterday uh, from uh, Nitesh from CEO. Um, 
what we have now is we can replace one side of the electrode that's carbon. This, uh, if you consider one side only, we can provide 10 times more capacity of. Okay, wait a minute, 10 times more capacity. All right, so what's that to mean to me if I have a laptop? Um, for the total battery, including all the electrolyte mm. and the, all the packaging and all, all the other components together, and, and the uh, calculation uh, shows uh, you, you can double your battery capacity. Um, so you double your life? Yeah, dub, double your life uh, per charge. Uh -huh. So you have eight hours, with, so I could make it across the United States without having to plug into that little widget in the... That's right. Yeah. Um, What's the market potential for this? I mean, how many batteries are made every year? You, you, do you know that? Um, the market is huge. Um, I do know uh, the, the dollar amount. I don't uh, know the number of batteries. Uh -huh. uh, nowadays, the lithium-ion battery market, the statistics in 2006 also is around $6 billion. Uh -huh. So uh, if, you, if you make batteries 50% more uh, Fifty percent better. Um, you either sell more batteries, or that number goes down, right? Uh, that number can the the number of battery you you sell can go down, but the price is going to go okay. up. Oh, okay, all right. So uh, there's one uh, observation, very interesting. Let let me mention this to you. Uh -huh. um, the most popular batteries people call 18650 cells. It costs about one dollar. Per, per batteries, if this battery has two amp hour capacity. Amp hour. Amp hour. Uh -huh. um, but certainly when people make batteries, there's some batteries that capacity is higher, higher than two amp hour per, uh, per, uh, two amp hours. Um, if you have a battery that's 2.6 amp hour, only 30% improvement, you can, you can charge this battery, you can sell these batteries three to four times uh, the price uh, of the uh, oh. two m hour one. Oh. So it looks like customers are willing to pay much higher price for a little amount of improvement. Well, I, as a traveler, uh, I can tell you that I would. Uh, it, there's no substitute for having power when you need it and you need to send in a report or get an email. So I, I, I believe that. Um, What's the next step? Where are we in the cycle of things? Is this a research, and then there's prototype, and then there's more prototypes, and then there's uh, uh, demonstrators, and, and so on? Um, and uh, last year also, we showed this battery has extremely high uh, capacity. Um, we cycle about uh, 20 cycles, mm -hmm. and last night, my graduate students sent me an email and gave me new data. Uh, uh, we now can go up to 100 cycles. Wow. Um, and um, so we are trying to improve the cycle life, say, up to 300 to 500 cycles. Then you can use it for uh, uh, cell phones, mm -hmm. uh, laptops, and go to 5,000 cycles. We can think about electrical vehicles batteries. Hmm. Electrical vehicle batteries that are 50% stronger I wonder what that would mean to the big C word. Mark, that would be pretty good, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would I work. Think, I think it would be good. Um, so we're, we're in the research stage of this thing, right? Yeah, uh, the stage is still on uh, this stage. Mm -hmm. And you're only working on one side of the battery, and you're working on the other side of the battery with a breakthrough yet to come that you won't tell me about. So. Um, where are you in the business plan? Do you have a, a, a venture capitalist uh, nipping at your heels? or? Well, I guess I have too many venture capitalists knocking at my door. So. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it's, um, it's been very exciting, the opportunity uh, down the road. Um, I, I am thinking seriously about uh, uh, you know, how to commercialize this technology. So if there's anybody in the audience that does this for a living, Here's a huge opportunity of something that is really real, that has a huge impact now. So it fits the act now scenario. Uh, we have about five minutes left, so I'm gonna throw you, to the, throw you under the bus and let the wolves have you out here. So if you'll bring up the house lights, are there any questions? 
front row here. What's the charging time of the battery comparative to standard lithium-ion technology? And will it be something where you can replace with an existing charger, or will it require charger redesign on the electronics? Mary Branscom, journalist. A uh, very good question. So charging time is not an issue. We are doing a one-hour charging and discharging. So it's, uh, it's practical now for your la uh, cell phone and laptop batteries. Um, the um, charging electronics, um, the voltage we are running is slightly different from the standard battery we are using. So there won't be a big change in the charging electronics, just the cut off voltage, uh, uh, which indicates when the battery is fully charged, that value needs to change. I have a question. Uh, knowing when a battery is charged is a very difficult thing. Uh, so um, is this, does it have a built-in system that lets you know that, that you can, your battery is fully charged, not charged? I mean, we have these things on the computer screen that tell us it's 86 and four minutes later it says it's zero. So is, is there something that inherent in this battery that's more stable in that regard in charging and discharging? Uh, it will be similar to the battery you are using. Mm -hmm. um, uh, actually, it's not that hard to tell uh, whether the ch uh, battery is full or empty. Okay. There's a, a voltage. When the battery is close to be empty, the voltage uh, decreases. Yeah. And it's fully charged, it's increased. There's mm -hmm. certain cut-off value you can use to judge that. Okay. Another question from out there? Yes, sir. Yeah, Tech Carlson, Microsoft. A uh, question regarding the heat uh, factors using with the battery and the efficiency of the battery. So what are we looking at when we're charging in an hour? Oftentimes heat is a consideration dealing with batteries and any considerations about potential explosion of the battery as well due to design issues that will obviously impact whether how we travel and how we use it. Thank you. This is also a very good question. Um, in terms of heat generation, heat is determined by your internal resistance of these batteries. So far, our battery has very similar in internal resistance as the commercial one. Um, and whether it, it's likely to explode or not, you know, silicon is a fairly safe material compared with carbon. Uh, so I would say it's quite similar. Say again. Do you have twice the heat? Uh, no, that's not, uh, the, uh, the question is, uh, since we have twice of capacity, whether you can have twice of heat? Uh, the answer is uh, no, the correlation is not like, not like that. So heat equals to column times resistance, internal resistance. It's the column you are running uh, and the internal resistance. It's not the total uh, battery capacity. Now, I'm going to ask you, is there, is there a, from a scientist's point of view, is there any showstopper here? Um, there's no showstoppers stop, at this moment. Uh, in a month or so, you can talk to me again. Mm -hmm. I might tell you it's 300 cycles now. <laughs> uh, it, uh, so it's, it, it's going, yeah, mm -hmm. there's no showstopper. Well, that's good. Any other questions from the audience? Uh, I, wa I want one. <laughs> or five or ten or a pack. Uh, are you going to market this in normal channels or have you gotten to thinking about that yet? Well, I will need the business people to think about this. For ah, me. we need business people again. Maybe I can find out what the secret is now if I'm a business people. All right, uh, that's it for us. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoyed it.